you have any questions, please write it in the comments. Be glad to share some powerful cognitions, some clicks I got from Swamiji. Recently, Swamiji has been talking about the power of initiation and how in the scriptures it says that initiation is the path towards enlightenment and enlightenment itself. And once initiation is granted, not only it is not killable, it means you can never get, you can never destroy the initiation, but in the scriptural scriptures, scriptural references, they mention that the moment you receive Diksha from the Guru, you are declared as a Jivan Mukta. You are declared as a liberated soul, liberated being. In one satsang, Swamiji was quoting a statement Adi Shankaracharya made when he was in the body and it was basically summarized as if you have a human body if you live in a time where an incarnation walks the earth and if you receive diksha initiation darshan from this avatar from this incarnation if after all these three if you are not enlightened you're a fool and recently Swamiji mentioned these scriptural references in the satsang and it literally says that Diksha is liberation. The only purpose of life, of assuming the human body, is to receive Diksha and be liberated. And it's as simple as that. It even goes further saying that the path towards enlightenment is not possible for those who did not receive Diksha, who did not receive the initiation of the Guru. So not only the initiation is the path, but it is also the result itself. So contemplating on that, remembering that, remembrance liberates. Swamiji also stated that Maya, the world, the delusion of the world, of this world, is available for everybody. Everybody is apt to engage with Maya, to relate with the delusion. But not every being is apt to receive initiation. Only the beings with Shraddha, Swamiji mapped Shraddha in the English language as steadfastness. And only those beings who have intense Shraddha receive the blessing of getting initiated. Swamiji also, sh also shared that life is too precious. Life is too precious. And that we should use this life which has been given to us by Paramashiva to raise our consciousness. Not to take it for granted. Constantly seeking to experience our consciousness more and more, to experience Paramashiva, who resides within us as well. Swamiji initiated us into the Mahavakya. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. Om means Om, the cosmic sound of the universe. Nityananda, eternal bliss. And Guru, because Swamiji is our Guru. 
and Paramashivoham. I am Paramashiva. I am the ultimate causeless auspiciousness, superconsciousness. Paramashiva does the five actions. He has five faces and each face does five phases. Creation, sustenance, destruction and rejuvenation, delusion and pulling out of delusion, and then liberation. So Paramashivam is all that. And all that is within us. Oham, aham means me. Paramashivam means I am Paramashiva. So constantly remembering that. Taking that into consideration when we make decisions, when we perform actions, when we decide to relate to people. Initiation is a gift from the Guru. just have to drop the ego, surrender, and receive the gift. Swamiji even said that even him as an incarnation, he needed a guru. He received it from his guru. Arunagiri Yogi Ishwara. Maranat Mukti Remembrance liberates Simply remembering these powerful cognitions, these initiations brings us to that space of Paramashivoham Oneness with the Guru, Oneness with Swamiji, Oneness with Paramashiva In the Kamikagama also Paramashiva says that he comes in the life in the form of Guru in the life of sincere seekers. So Guru Swamiji recently said that Guru is the manifested form of Paramashiva. Paramashiva is the unmanifested form of Guru. Both are one and the same. One in the dimension of the unmanifest and the other one in the, in the dimension of the manifested. Guru is the, when Paramashiva says that he comes in the form of Guru in the life of a sincere seeker, Guru is such a most auspicious happening, most intense and auspicious happening in the life of a spiritual seeker. In the life of Paramahamsa Yogananda, in his autobiography, he says that before he met his Guru, he had um, visions of his guru and he was a little bit frightened because he knew the responsibility that it required to accept guru in your life because when guru happens in your life your whole life changes
Guru helps you and guides you in exploring and rediscovering the parts of you which you have forgotten. He initiates, supports you in the process of rediscovering who you are, all your dimensions, all your states of consciousness. Swamji shared that initiation manifests fully in a pure body. When the body is pure, initiation manifests. That is why the importance of detoxing the body and maintaining the body in a very high state is very important. So that the more subtle energies can manifest and radiate through the body faster. And for that, things like taking haritaki powder, castor oil, neem juice, not consuming any solid food after sunset, actually reducing solid food as much as you can. Somebody says, one meal a day is more than enough of solid food. For the rest, you can have juices, soups, fruit juice, vegetable juices, keeping the body pure, light. Somji says when you have solid food, in, when you consume solid food, it creates friction inside the internal organs. And that friction gets the brain busy. So the brain is spending part of its energy into managing that instead of going for higher states of consciousness. So when you reduce the amount of food you consume, then there's less friction. You have more energy. The brain is more alive, more active. You become more efficient, more productive. You manifest the reality that you want faster. So Amji shared that it is actually a conspiracy against human beings this thought that you need three meals in a day. Of course, Swamji mentioned that people who are highly physic physically active, like people who are constantly using their body for their work, like farmers, maybe not the farmers of today because they have a lot of trucks and all that, but people who are physically active then for them consuming food will be less harmful because the body consumes, is, is active and consumes, uh, its consumption is much higher. But in today's world, most of our lives are very, uh, do not require our body to be highly active. Sitting on chairs, using computers, the technology is making the lifestyle more passive so for that lifestyle, consuming solid food is, is dangerous in the way that it is obstructing your expansion, your conscious expansion. The purpose of life is to expand our consciousness, to read, to ex experience and expand our consciousness. That's why Swamiji says life is a gift. Use it to raise your consciousness. If 
you have any questions, please write it in the comments. I'll share whatever clicks, cognitions I have regarding that. It's from just shared with all of us. One thing you can see Swamiji initiates us in the space of Paramashivoham that we are Paramashiva and Swamiji mentioned that there's two states there's a state in which we want miracles to land on us Swamiji so says that is the space of a devotee. A devotee is waiting for the Lord to intervene in his life. The second space is to realize that the Lord is also sitting inside. So not only being in the receptive space to receive, but, we should, but you should simultaneously cherish a space where you manifest the reality, where you cause the miracle, you manifest the miracle. For that, the, cogn the cognition that Paramashiva is inside has to be strengthened more and more. We have to constantly remember and from that remembrance go and make decisions and make actions in our lives. More responsibilism. More ownership. Not possessiveness, ownership. Feeling that you own and that you're using whatever you own to enrich people around you and yourself simultaneously the society has Swamiji was mentioning in one of his books that uh, he was he was he was talking about the life of Buddha and he was saying that how Buddha was sharing that in our life, we have two types of desires. Our desires, our true desires, which are coming with our bio-memory, the purpose for which we assume the human body. And borrowed desires, desires that we decided to pick up from what society is telling us. And the, the thing is that borrowed desires create confusion and conflicts inside your inner space because they're not yours but somehow you decided to take them on for whatever reason one thing that clicked with me with that was that that's how marketing works right marketing is all about uh, creating a false desire into someone in order for that person to consume what you wish to sell. So when we become more responsible, when we start to look into how can I manifest the reality I want, not only being in the space of prayer, the space of prayer is required to invoke Paramashiva to invoke Guru's grace but also in the puja we say Sohamasmi even as I remember you even when I worship you I know that I am you so that cognition of responsibilism and ownership needs to be cognized more and more deeply and when you start to work to create your reality you will realize that many of the desires you cherish are not yours you don't really, really care about these desires. Somehow, you know, you're like, oh yeah, okay, why not? You're, 
So should not get lost in this borrowed desired space and just remain centered in your consciousness and consciously decide what you want to manifest in your life and start to manifest that from the space of Paramashivoham Oneness with Swamiji For me one of the main thing which clicked with all these sharings that Swamiji gave was that Paramashiva teaches his devotees that he resides within them and that is so powerful because the more you cognize that you you start to become more and more responsible for everything that happens inside of you and outside of you more friendliness with life, more engagement with life. Waiting for a miracle to happen is not wrong, but it's not complete. The more we cognize this, all the emotional turmoil, mental turmoil, physical problems, everything disappears, gets healed. We become aligned to our consciousness, to our true self. Paramashiva. Yes. One thing which Swamiji shared which really impacted me in a very positive way and which helps to really dispel this feeling that sometimes we feel we are lost, we lose the, we don't know what we're doing, what we're supposed to do, we get into a space where we feel lost and disconnected from everything around us. And one thing that Swamiji said, very simple, but so powerful, Paramashiva is real, Paramashiva is real. And have conversation with Paramashiva. So if you fall into a space like that, you just connect with Swamiji, connect with Paramashiva, and Share sincerely whatever is happening in you, whatever you witness within yourself. Share that with him. Sincerely, authentically. A very innocent and pure relationship without any misconceptions, perversions, nothing. Just a pure, innocent relationship. Whatever you see, you share whatever you want, you ask. No filters. Yes. Not able to connect with living and non-living. 
Yes, at that moment is a time where we have to seek to experience our consciousness intensely. Everything we see, Maya, Swamiji said, I think in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita decoded, um, that Swamiji made, Swamiji says that Maya is something that we truly believe is there, but in reality is not there. So, whenever we get into a space where we, are, we feel unable to connect with living beings or non-living beings, just sitting with ourselves and contemplating that everything is a projection of us. Swanji was giving a very simple example. If somebody is whispering, if somebody is shouting, we will have our, we will have our own conclusions about why the person who is whispering, maybe he is shy, maybe he's afraid, maybe he's in a situation where he doesn't want to disturb. Somebody who shouts is somebody aggressive, maybe somebody angry, maybe somebody uh, panicking. We put our, we label the happening. But in reality, Swamiji says, it's just a sound. A sound with, of a lesser intensity, of a higher intensity. It's just a sound. It doesn't have any qualities, it doesn't have anything specific attached to it. But we attach things to these happenings. Because we are consciousness and we have the power to create whatever we want out of what we experience. So when we experience something which we do not feel comfortable with, we should come back and look in to, to, stay, to, to experience, to come back and look towards our consciousness, which is the source of everything which we experience, of the subjective reality. Each one of us is experiencing the world differently because it is a subjective reality. We label things, we judge things, we come to conclusions about things. And, so, and we are also, we are creating a society which is teaching us to do that also. So that gets reinforced more and more. But you can just look in and see, oh, who is judging? Why am I, ju why, why am I thinking like that? Just bringing everything back towards the self, towards the source towards the source, you are the source of that happening, of that experience, bringing the awareness and the focus on the source and not getting lost in the manifestation. That's why Swamiji says, a child should, sh should first be taught to experience his consciousness. Once he experiences his consciousness, he can engage with the world and he will never get lost because he has experienced his consciousness and on the and actually as he engaged with the world after with the world afterwards each experience with the world will strengthen his consciousness but when you do not have a solid experience of your consciousness when you engage with the world you get lost and swamiji said when that happens you lose your consciousness and you lose the world you do not, we do not realize that we are consciousness and we do not understand why we manifest the reality we manifest. And we fall into a space of confusion, conflicts, self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. So it's very important to go back to the source. To become aware. 
Swamiji was giving an example. He was scrolling on his iPad and suddenly there was a, a poster of uh, a movie and there was an actress who was dressed like Devi and she was giving blessings and Swamiji bowed down. And then somebody that was next to Swamiji said, Hey, why are, you, why are you bowing down? This is not Devi, this is an actress. And Swamiji, said, he, Swamiji kept quiet. He didn't say anything. He kept scrolling. And then another picture came, which was a snake. And Swamiji, he picked up, he said, I stopped scrolling. I put the iPad on the table. I, I picked up my cup of coffee. And I asked that person, Hey, can you zoom? Can you, with your fingers, can you touch the touch screen and zoom? I want to see this picture in a bigger way. And then the person next to Swamiji said, Hey, no, 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 that's a snake. I don't want to touch. Then Swamiji said, Ah, oh, you see, you see, you see? Your fear makes the snake alive for you. My devotion makes Devi alive for me. So what you cherish inside matters. It is directly responsible for the reality you experience. So when we experience, I mean, it's... we. All the time we should constantly be aware but sometimes we get lost when we enjoy and it's only when we experience suffering that we start to question ourselves again so when there is something which is happening which we are not in tune with that we do not feel complete about we should look in and see what it, what it, what is going on what is the space I'm cherishing in what space am I in which is responsible for me to experience this happening in such an unpleasant way. Like that, we get in touch with our consciousness. And when we get in touch with our consciousness, we are always powerful, always fulfilled. And then Swamiji said, the more you do that, the more you realize that you are the source of everything and that you can manifest anything you want in your life. But it has to become solid experience within you. So that's why we have to constantly do it. Remembering Guru, remembering initiations, remembering Mahavakya, remembering the cosmic principles that Swamiji has initiated us into. Remember, remember, remember. The more you remember, the more you implement. The more you implement, the more it becomes a solid experience for you. And at some point, the experience becomes so solid that you never forget. How this body is such a solid experience for us. When we are awake, we do not forget the body. Unless you drug yourself or you go, but that's a different story. But otherwise, you don't forget the body because it's a solid experience. It has a certain level of impact on us because of the level of solidity of the experience. So in the same way, we have to bring these cosmic principles, these initiations into solid experience for us. When you touch your consciousness, you become so alive, energetic, inspired. Everything changes because the frequency is a totally different level. Even things which you normally would not do or feel bad about, when you're in tune with your consciousness, you do not have any resistance towards them. That does not mean that you engage with them, obviously. You're not going to jump off a cliff or anything. You're not going to do anything crazy. But the resistance is not there. There's no hatred. There's no violence. Space of non-violence happens. Like Swamiji was saying, right? Krishna, he was there and he was... He pretty much managed the biggest war which happened in history. And so many people died. And it can seem like such a violent happening. But actually, it was the most non-violent thing. Because 
Krishna is the incarnation of Vishnu and when he came, he came for the sake of protecting the universe. And many of the beings which were there during the war had the power to destroy the universe. And they were not in the space of complete completions, complete completion, they were going through ups and downs. So at any moment, on a whim, they could have decided to use the Shastras and destroy the universe. So Krishna had to come and create an environment where each one of them nullify each other and destroy each other for the sake of protecting the universe. When too much power is given to too many people who are unstable in their inner space, it becomes dangerous. And then for the sake of protecting the universe, Avatar happens. So it seems violent, but it's actually completely non-violent. So non-violent. The vision of Krishna is so big. When we see our lives, we see, oh me, and maybe to a certain extent your family, your loved ones. Your life stays at that. But Krishna is seeing for everything, for the universe. He's planning, strategizing, making decisions from the context of the universe, not from the context of him or his wife or his loved ones, his devotees. No. He's taking decisions for the entire universe. So when we experience our consciousness, we become nonviolent in our core.